Welcome everybody, welcome to another solo adventurer with me, Christian Jella. What is the solo adventurer? Well, every week-ish, <laughs> I either play a solo adventure game, um, interactive fiction, roleplay game, that kind of thing, or I try a tool. And today I'm going to try a tool, actually. Um, an interactive fiction tool, which kind of crosses over a little bit with some of my other videos, but I, uh, I wanted to give it a go. If you like what you see, you can find more at christianchiller.com, which also includes all of my other writing and my games as well. Wherever you are watching, and if you're watching this live, you can subscribe and you can say hi in chat and you can uh, give me a thumbs up if you want. If you're watching later on the edited version on YouTube, you can do all the same. And thank you very much for joining me. So what am I looking at today? I am looking at Ink, a narrative scripting language for games. I came across this through a video I made a few weeks back called Grievance, which said across the top, created in Ink, which I'd not heard of before. I have used Twine. I've also made a video on Twine and I'll put links to both of those videos in the uh, notes and the comment sections of wherever you're watching this. But I saw this and was interested to see what it did differently. Twine is kind of an open source, more community oriented tool, whereas this looks like it's more uh, made by one company. In fact, I'm just trying to see it. Yeah, every one of our games and many other besides has used it. So what kind of games do Inkle make? 80 days, a narrative fiction game. They do have other games. I assume they also used it. They will look somewhat similar. And many others. Let's have a look at some of the others. Oh, these are mostly tools and things. We'll come back to this in a minute. Uh, a bit later, I always like to see what the community is like after we've tried a tool. And it has a handful of tutorials here, which we'll try in a minute. And I'll also try uh, maybe converting one of my ideas. So what have we got? Markup, not programming. Text comes first, code and logic are inserted within. That's a lot like Twine. Simple, elegant syntax. So they say, we'll find out later. Proven, we just came across that. Easy to learn with advanced scripting, also similar to Twine, conceived as middleware. Now this is where things become interesting because yes, you can connect up with Unity, which actually seems quite interesting. I'm trying to learn Unity. I may try this if I get a chance, we'll see. It is open source. Uh, and we'll have a look at the community later. And there's a sample game we can have a look at as well. And then a Discord server. I reckon we will just download this editor and, and get started really. So I'm assuming it's gonna be a web application. So last released, or maybe not, we'll see in a minute. Last released just over a year ago. So it's not too bad. Here we go. Now we should be able to zoom in on this, which is one advantage. Good. Now, let's have a quick click around the interface. We can see text and a preview. We can see this is the same file, yep. We have a um, bunch of export and import options here. Um, some story things and some shortcuts up the top here. I don't know if you can see these, let's zoom in a bit for, I'm guessing for syntax, which we'll, we'll check in a minute. And that's basically it. So let's uh, move things around a little bit. Getting started, let's start with the basics tutorial then. Writing web-based interactive fiction with ink for complete beginners. So it talks about Twine here. Um, ink by comparison is a system that wasn't originally designed for the web. It was designed as a pluggable component integrates into traditional game engines. This is interesting. This is something I've always struggled with, with um, Twine is you create the game and then what? <laughs> uh, I may not get to the stage of being able to put this into Unity, but we'll see, we'll see. This guide will assume zero prior knowledge. Getting started with Ink, if you've done all this exporting, yes, getting started. There's an official manual. 
didn't see that linked anywhere. Okay, we'll come back to that if we need it. Uh, this guide will jump through all of that, pointing out the most easily understood features. Choose your own adventure style. Good, now I have an idea for this. It's a bit of a weird one. Um, bear with me. <laughs> it's a story I was thinking of turning it into an interactive fiction anyway. I won't get through all of it here. It was based on a dream. <laughs> Some of the best ideas are. I think I'd been watching The West Wing at the time. And um, the idea was that the, <laughs> the New Hampshire Democrats, definitely West Wing references there, are trying to take over the world through PowerPoint, PowerPoint presentations. Yep, crazy idea, I know. And uh, I decided I wanted to turn this into uh, interactive fiction. I was thinking Twine, but we could try with Inkle. Especially this could be more visual. But the game is actually you get to choose, you get to help them make the PowerPoint presentation. Weird idea, but that's what we're going to try and make very loosely. So there we go. Okay, where were we? Uh, we've downloaded it. We see all of this mentioned here, the two windows. It is fundamentally just written in text with special annotations. Anyone who's used to Markdown and things will recognize some of this. I've also looked at Expedition and Twine, and these all use very similar ideas. Um, anatomy of an Ink Story. All right. So having a look at this, I don't know how visible this image is. Let's zoom in a bit. This actually looks a lot like the Expedition syntax, actually. So we have um, a kind of an equivalent of a go to here and this marks a section you can go to uh, and then click through links that will instead take you to a section, etc., etc. Um, I'm not sure what this plus means, but um, we'll come to that in a second. But so far it makes reasonable sense. We can actually find the full text of this here. Uh, yeah, so let's just paste that in. Ah, I see. So this is saying just show the next section, not actually go to the section and then the clink, the clink, the link, <laughs> the clicking the link will take you to that section, I think. Let's see. So resident of Monsieur Phileas Fogg, that's this. It continues straight to the London section here. And then we get these links. Ah, so plus means links and you can have it wrapped in the brackets or just like this, I think. So if we click this, it will take us to Astonished. Yeah, and I remember this in uh, when I did Grievance. It always kept appearing. And yes, we see this here and that will take us to the end instead. If we went back, wait, we can't actually. I think this means go backwards then. Yes. Yeah, there we go. So. You see the idea. Cool. So they call these triple equal signs uh, symbols knots. So these are the linked sections. At least two. So this is a bit like if you've ever done anything with restructured text, the, the quantity of symbols doesn't really matter as long as you're consistent. I think, I don't know if ink is the same, but that's a bit like restructured text. And then we have a divert this arrow, um, tell it to go to a different knot. And a special kind, which is the end, okay? Choices are the plus symbols, and yeah, you can do them in these different ways. Conditional content, this is where things usually get more interesting. Um, okay, let's have a look. So this is Choose Your Own Adventure, pretty much. Um, Ink Engine takes note of every section of content that the player reads so that you can query this later on. Oh. For example, determine whether the player saw a particular knot called catacombs. Within one of these curly brace sections, you can include multiple lines of content. So that's a knot itself. So let's say in the ending, we want to see if they ever saw Astonished. So for example, we don't really um, want to show this amazing content if they didn't um, read Astonished. Ah, oh, look, we're actually getting autocomplete here as well, which is pretty cool. And I want to have some kind of default content here. Goodbye. Uh, if I just click this, I should just see, yeah, goodbye. If 
we went through that first, we see the whole thing. Brilliant. Cool. Makes sense so far. You can also say not. You can negate it. Cool. Uh, and we can do ands and ors. So this is sort of basic logic you're probably familiar with in programming if you've done that. Um, and even combinations of logic. This, anyone who watches my programming videos, this will all seem fairly familiar. So this is, did they go to the catacombs or cross the river or sing in the rain and not buy new shoes? So one of these needs to be true and this needs to be not true, those conditions. Here's some of the advanced stuff. Um, keep custom variables. We haven't really seen how yet. Uh, different ways you can do the bullets. Uh, harder to learn, but easy to write system for writing intricate branches called weave. Okay. You can also have stitches in knots. Okay. Branches. Multiple files. This is something Twine does not let you do, which would be cool. And then exporting to web web and uploading to it so it just does it as a javascript file images clearing the screen ah, global tags theme author etc custom css and we can customize the end as well restarting the story so it gives you a web application so you can customize all sorts of things here customizing fonts and colors i don't really want to get into this side of things right now. I'd like to get to the next um, tutorial actually. So that was the basics. Writer's manual. I don't know if this is going to be very, very complex. Yes, it is. Okay. Um, I guess that is the tutorial then. <laughs> so writer's manual. So this shows us some of the syntax we can use. Comments. These both look very much like comments in um, HTML. Huh. Don't really understand what this means. <laughs> a simple system for tagging lines of content with hashtags. So you're just adding metadata, I suppose. Interesting. Input. We had a look at already. Oh, I see. So it flows into the next line if you don't provide any other oops, kind of input. Yeah. It's kind of hard to see because it just does it. Ah, right, here we go. So you click it. Yeah, and it just keeps going. This is something I found slightly confusing when I played uh, Grievance, but um, it has a certain style. It kind of keeps it going, whereas Twine, so it's very section gone, section, section. It kind of chops and changes. Suppressing choices. Ah, so this is what the square bracket means. So let's have a look at that and see how that looks. I don't really see what the difference there was. So hello back is not shown. If instead, yeah, it stays there. Okay, that makes sense. I, that's more like a twine then. I think I find that tidier. Ah, you can, so this becomes more the way you generally do things in twine with links in line as well. The back that was the link. Yeah, okay. It's kind of odd to see. So hello back and everything after it is hidden. Yeah, I don't know. It's a slightly odd one. I'm not sure how useful that would be. Also oh, for dialogue. Okay. Yeah, let's let's see. Maybe it'll make sense. It's interesting because it because the choice is the dot, but it hides everything afterward. Yeah. Okay, that makes a sort of a sense. Uh, yeah, it's a weird one, but yeah. Multiple choices we saw already. Knots we've already seen. Not to divert to knots. I'd like to go to this uh what do they call them? Weaves. Um we saw all this already. Okay, so this is now where we start to get into some more detailed stuff. I, I've shown, um, I think I can show you again. This is, uh, this is the mind map I made for one of my stories in Twine. So it shows you how complex choices can. And this is actually quite a simple one, to be honest with you. Um, okay, not, not there. So this is quite a simple one, actually. Um, this shows you kind of where narratives can go into multiple different options, back on themselves, all sorts of things like that. Um, yeah, and this didn't, it only takes about 10 minutes to, to go through it. Really complex ones that go on for 40 minutes or so. Who knows what this looks like? But yeah, so you can go back and forth and have all sorts of strange options. So 
Combining knots, options, and diverts gives us the basic structure of a choose your own adventure game. Ah, so let's do that. Let's, let's create paragraph two and paragraph three. Why not? Ah, okay. Doesn't like loose ends and produces a one compilation and or runtime and it thinks this has happened. So you need to have an opening that was too much structure with no flow, basically. Do we open the gate, smash down the gate, or turn back and go home? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Not, uh, I mean, you also know that every option is going to lead to the same place anyway. So, okay, get the idea. Using diverts, the writer can branch the flow and join it back up again. This is kind of where things get interesting. So this takes us automatically to this choice, which is down here. Ah, I see. I think the interesting thing here is I'm used to the kind of more a static way that Twine and uh, Expedition does this, whereas this kind of automatically loads things if you don't provide a choice. So in both of these cases, there was no blocked choice. It just carried on. So we arrive in London. Let's just savor the moment. It just automatically shows the next line and then flows instantly to this. So this is where it gets very interesting with the fact that you can um, break the project into different snippets. You can actually then include those in different places uh, and reuse text, which is quite cool. And if we do the other option, we hurry it home. Um, it just goes straight. No, it does uh, this one and then that one. Okay. I think that sort of makes sense. It's almost a little bit like, um, kind of like variables, but not, not quite. I don't know. It's hard to describe actually. It's an odd kind of syntax, but it makes sense in the, in the, 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 in, in the terms of the platform, I guess. Um, loops. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm trying to think why you'd want a loop. <laughs> I'm sure there's definitely use cases I can't think of right now. Okay. Um, stitches. So what is a stitch? As the stories get longer, they become more confusing to keep organized without some additional structure. Knots can be include subsections called stitches. You could use a knot for a scene, for instance, and stitches for the events in the scene. And then you have like this dot syntax. Hmm. Interesting. Let's try this. So for example, we could say, yeah, I see what it means by not liking a loose end. So in Twine, for example, you can have a loose ends that go nowhere, basically, and just end, and that's considered an end. Whereas here you have to sort of actually declare an end or another path, basically. You can't just have a path that goes nowhere. So let's do rich. But that is still a loose end. So this could be the end, for example. This I think it will still complain because these all go, oh, I say at least you can save these locally as well. This is another problem with Twine. It exists in kind of browser. It feels a bit like uh, programming in um, basic. <laughs> but it's a narrative tool. It makes sense. It kind of prompts you to make sure your stories are wrapped up. And here's where we can combine things. This I really like actually as a concept. Um, and the fact that you can actually save them is nice. Uh, it sounds crazy, but yeah, it's a web tool after all. It's nice to actually have a file. Uh, here we start to get more complex. Choices can only be used one. This is where I've been a little unclear on some of the syntax here. So yeah, so arrow always means choice. There we go. That's how you do it. You have to think about this kind of partiality without blocking the uh, the narrative flow, um, it always gets shown. So even though this is a different section, it gets shown. Yeah, interesting. So travel in third class. Right, now you see, that's actually quite nice. Yeah. <laughs> that I like actually, that's a bit tidier. The syntax takes a little bit longer to get your head around, but it's, it's quite tidy. And there's a lot more you can do. This is actually quite cool so far. Um, let's see about the export quickly. Export for web. Uh, let's just put it on the desktop for now. Easier to get to. And a 
effectively. We just uh, opened in the browser here and it's pretty much the same as you'd expect. Yeah, it just looks different. So that's, oh, oh, there's a book. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, and a lot more here besides. Um, I quite like what I'm seeing so far, but what I'd like to know, and this is something I've found with, with Twine. Yeah, there's so much more here. Wow, this is pretty complex. Uh, this is now halfway down the guide. Um, what I found with Twine is that it sometimes feels like the community around it is a little inactive. So this is what I want to see how active this is. So these are integrations with other gaming engines, which is actually quite useful. Uh, Ink.js, I don't really understand that one, but anyway, Godot, which is a gaming engine. Um, GD script, I guess another game, a whole bunch of gaming engines basically. So these are all, this is where it's interesting. Whereas Twine tends to aim its integration points at um, other kind of text formats. This definitely aims at um, turning it into an actual like proper game, quote unquote, which is cool. I don't know how much of it I'm gonna, I would use, but it's an interesting idea. Um, editors and extensions. Quill Ink Language Server. That's cool because you could... Oh, there is a VS Code extension. So Visual Studio Code for anyone who is coming from my more gaming crowd is um, a text... Well, it's mostly aimed at programmers, but you can also do writing in it. I do a lot of writing in it as well. Um, and there's extensions for it that extend it in various ways. It's open source, but made by... Microsoft, um, and I have a lot of other tools in it. So it's always nice if you get an integration. Yeah, here we go. Because then you can do all sorts of other things with it. So in theory, what we want to see here is kind of a preview and all the same features, but in Visual Studio Code. And it was last updated in 2017, which doesn't bode too well, but let uh, me... I won't zoom in here. There doesn't really seem to be any preview though, so I don't know how useful this is. <laughs> it's just a support for the language, but not much else. I don't know if we get any of the completion maybe. Yeah, we get the completion at least. That's useful, but no preview. Hmm, that's a shame. That makes it less useful. Um, and then all sorts of frameworks as well. Wow, oh, for building chatbots, now that's cool. I'd love a visualization one as well. I still worry though, because a lot of the dates I'm seeing on these things look somewhat old. Two years ago, four years ago, 18 days ago, which is not so bad. Ink itself was updated a year ago or released a year ago. It's not massively active, but it's reasonably active. I like it actually, I like it quite a lot. Um, I will definitely try my next story in it and see what happens uh, and see how it compares to uh, using Twine and I'll report back. I didn't really get to that stage. <laughs> I'd love to try the Unity integration and see what I can do and what it actually gives you. So maybe that's a future video. But uh, I like it actually. Um, I'm going to jump in the Discord server as well and see how active it is there and uh, put a link to this video when it's done. So I really like that. I hope you found it interesting too. Jump on over to inklestudios.com slash ink and you will find that there. Uh, and try it out. And if you create anything yourself, publish it on the web or on itch and uh, tell me about it. I'd love to, I'd love to, I'd love to see it, see what you've done. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you are a story writer, then always look like looking at these cool tools for games you can make. If you enjoyed what you saw, you can always find more at christianchiller.com. Wherever you happen to be watching, live or later, subscribe, say hi, leave a comment. Always nice to hear from you. And I haven't decided what I'm doing next week on The Solo Adventurer, but um, you can drop by any of the locations I just mentioned and find some of my other videos which um, have been scheduled. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining me. I look forward to seeing your stories. And until next time... Thank you very much for joining me. See you, everybody.